Welcome back to Genesis Custom Sabers and this one uh, is a little bit out of the ordinary for me. I've been thinking about it for some time and a client requested a samurai themed lightsaber uh, so I set up about to design this one and I'm really happy with how it turned out just completed. Um, it's, uh, it's made with heavily modified MHS parts. Um, the blade holder has been turned down and fitted with a, uh, an aluminum machined ring uh, called the Tsuba, which would be the, uh, the uh, similar equivalent in a, in a samurai sword. These are uh, heavily modified MHS parts that have been machined to have a diamond shape and a groove, uh, grooves in the, uh, uh, in the piece to simulate the, uh, the wrap that would go around a, a samurai saber. Of course it's got the uh, crystal chamber uh, in the middle and uh, a really cool pommel with my custom uh, pommel uh, insert in there. And uh, this saber is ready to go. It's got a, a petite crouton sound card in it, um, a blue soul P4 LED, and a visible crystal reveal. Um, I know what you may be thinking, not because I can read minds, but you're wondering where is where are the switches? Uh, well, they're hidden in this one. Um, so I'll give you a quick little uh, demo of how it works. The uh, the kill key is here. It uh, obscures a recharge port, 2.1 millimeter. You can hear it boot up. Um, this has got my uh, revenge sound font in there. You may be able to tell that the crystal actually blinks. There's two LEDs that light the crystal. One is the accent LED that blinks white when it's in ready mode. And I'll put a blade in. Um, blade goes there, blade retention screw. Uh, so how do you turn it on? Well, uh, with this saber, the three of the grooves reveal the crystal and then there's three of the grooves that don't and uh, you probably can't see it but there's a, a patterned rubber in there and that uh, covers a switch so in the center of the groove you press and uh, instantly the crystal lights up with a bright blue and uh, the accent LED flickers a little bit to give you a, a sense of the, uh, the crystal being alive um, I'm going to see if I can do a close for that so you can see it better so here you have the uh, you know, the crystal blinking away, you can see the uh, gold and brass fittings that hold the crystal in there. Um, and then the, the power button is the center of this rubber textured. And just design point of view, you may notice the diamond pattern in the, uh, in the rubber. It's very similar to the diamond pattern in the uh, knurling of the, uh, the kill switch or the kill key. So this is the, uh, this is the power button. Turn the saber on. See so the crystal lights up blue and it flickers. Really cool flicker effect. Now the blue LED that lights the crystal is the same as the LED that lights the blade. Or it's the same, it runs with the same uh, flickering and imagery. The secondary flicker is the, uh, is the white LED that's the accent LED. So that can be changed, it can be turned off uh, with the programming of the SD card. And like I said, you've got three windows that reveal the crystal and three that don't that have that patterned rubber. Um, this one is the auxiliary button, center of this one. So that's your blaster block. This one does nothing, it's just a, just a patterned rubber grip. So that's how that looks. Of course, the Revenge sound font's really cool and unique. Um, it's made for a dark side saber, but a samurai saber is, uh, is unique enough that I think it fits really well. It's got a different, different style of hum pattern after Darth Maul, very reminiscent of that. The swings are pretty quick and sharp. Clashes. Oops. Very much like Dark Mauls from episode one. Uh, so yeah, that's that saber. That's how it works. Uh, bright blue blade is really, really striking with the dark features. Turn the saber off. Pull out the blade. And then there's a couple of things with it in terms of the operation of this saber that I wanted to show because this video will serve as the instruction for the client as well. Um, with the kill key out, because you don't want to turn the bottom half of the saber with the kill key in because it'll it could shear it off. Um, you grip the the crystal part and you twist and this this bottom whole segment unscrews like many sabers that you've seen me do recently um, to give access to the SD card it's uh, mounted in a PVC chassis you know, the wires are kind of tucked in and protected um, now with this saber it's it, it's never recommended to, to take it apart put it back together take it apart all the time but to gain access to the SD card that's what you need to do kill key shuts it off so now there's no power to the saber you can't 
can't turn it on. Now this one, uh, like others, in order to gain access to the SD card, you use the magic pencil and you press inside there until you hear it click and you can see the SD cards popped out. You'd use your needle nose pliers to pull that out, um, change whatever settings you need to or put a new sound font on and to put it back in you do that until it clicks. If you want to make sure you've done it right, you hear the boot sound. If you hear a series of beeps, it means something's wrong, the card's not in properly or there's uh, missing uh, computer files uh, or a corrupted file or something like that. Anyways, the saber goes back together. I took a lot of care to machine the uh, the pieces so that all the diamonds line up and the uh, the uh, recharge port lines up with the uh, um, with the hole. Now if it for whatever reason ever gets jarred and it doesn't line up it is possible to slowly shift and rotate the, uh, the PVC chassis in order to get it to line up. Um, you'll notice there's a there's a tiny set screw there. That's a tension set screw that basically holds the PVC chassis from turning. Keeps it lined up. And you can see there's a little blue mark on the, P on the PVC. There's also a blue mark on the aluminum. Well those, those match so that tells me that this is lined up. If it, uh, for whatever reason, uh, became out of alignment, it is possible, although not recommended, to uh, to light, undo this a little bit, just a, just a quarter of a turn. That'll give you enough flexibility to be able to rotate that, move that. Um, but uh, it really shouldn't need to do that. Everything's lined up really well. Um, yeah, then you put the saber back together and it's ready for use. There is one other thing that I'd like to demonstrate on this saber. Um, just in the design phase, um, I like to design things with the future in mind, upgrades in mind. If the client wanted to take this machine Suba and uh, take it somewhere to get it laser engraved or etched or have scripting put on that or something like that, it is possible to take off the blade retention screw. There's also a, a little tiny set screw that's hidden there. This is one of those tricky set screws that um, you actually want to tighten. So if you notice this, I turn clockwise probably about one full turn. That tightens the, the set screw which is inside, allows this sleeve to slide off which is no longer held in place and this tight fitting Suba can come right off. And then you can take it in someplace and get it uh, get it worked on, machine, get some, some custom scripting. Um, you'll notice that it's there's a seat in there that matches with the saber so it really only uh, goes on the one way, the other way it won't quite fit. And make sure it's on there and you can put this all back together and uh, want to line up the uh, good way to line it up is just to put the set screw or the uh, blade retention screw back in it's a really great way to make sure that the holes line up so while that's threaded now I can go back to this one and now what I want to do is I know it's strange I want to loosen or in other words counterclockwise another full turn and what that does is it tightens then this collar so now this can be jammed and bashed and dueling and it's not going to go anywhere you can see that's the set screw in there so that's this new saber uh, really pleased with how it turned out and uh, thanks for looking